Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm going to teach you how to play Tekken as a new player or a newer player who is not very familiar with Tekken and the fundamentals of it. I will not go over everything, but I will go over the most important things at very low level uh, online ranked play and just in general fundamentals of Tekken so you can actually play a little bit better and you understand the game a little bit better. First things first, you will want to know what the notations are of Tekken because I will use I will use them a lot as I'm used to using that. I will uh, put a link down below with notations so you can understand uh, what the notations are. First things first, you want to know how to block. You hold back to block mid and high attacks, which is back walking. If you time it correctly with an attack and you just hold back at that moment, you are safe if it's a high or a mid. There are exceptions to this though, if there is a throw used, you have to uh, break the throw differently because you cannot just block it. And unblo uh, unblockables, yeah, it says it already, you cannot block that, so you need to get out of it. But in general, people will not use that that much. Throws a little bit more, unblockables a lot less because it's very risky to do. And uh, for example, if I use 1-1, one, one, that's a high with Kazumi. And if I make Kazumi do it as well, it's also a high. And I have to admit as well. So now, I just need to block by holding back. You want to be actively blocking, so holding back while blocking. Because you can also just release it. But if you don't block actively by holding back, you are uh, more likely to get hit by a high and mid. Because if they just hit you, you get a little bit of stunt, and um, it takes longer for your character to go back in neutral and automatically block. So holding back is the best option you have to block mid and highs, which you want to do. While holding back, you are still vulnerable at low levels, like low kicks, low everything that goes low will hit you still if you're just walking back so let's say Kazuya is stand guarding which is holding back I can still hit that but I cannot hit him with a mid but I can still hit him with a low meaning if somebody is just blocking a lot like this you may want to go for low and then distract him and chip away his HP, like that. To block though, there you have to hold back and down at the same time. So let's say Kazia does a mid and a low. Now I have to do two things. I first have to block the mid and after that I need to block the low. Because when you're blocking low with, by holding down back, you are vulnerable with, uh, for mid attacks. High attacks will whiff, meaning they will not land, they will not hit you. A whiff attack in general means uh, an attack that does not connect with the opponent or target. Like this is a whiff. This is a whiff as well, because it does not connect. Now, let's say I'm crouching, he does a high, it does whiff, because it will not connect. But if I'm crouching, I'm vulnerable for mids. So meaning a mid attack will still hit me. A low attack will be just blocked. Now, let's say Kazi is attacking me, he does mid and now he goes for low. And he go down back then. So back, down back. You can practice this in practice mode just like how I'm doing. To get more comfortable with animations. And to see when he's doing what attack. It can be a little bit difficult. But it's one of the best ways to learn how to block. Instead of down or blocking uh, the low attacks, you can also low parry by doing down forward when he's going to hit you. You want to do this if you are pretty sure he's going to attack with something, because it guarantees a combo, a launch combo. But you need to know how to combo from that. So Kazumi you may want to do this or something else or you can just 
hold down back and block punish. Talking about block punish, uh, and block punish is uh, let's put him back to stun. Well, it actually says it already. If you block an attack, you can punish. Meaning, if Kazia, for example, uh, I would just make him do the same thing. Does the low, and I block it. You see, there's a recovery. It takes, some, it takes him a while to go back into his normal stance. While that happens, I can punish by using, for example, while standing 2 for Kazumi. Or just while standing 4. Maybe even while standing 4 4. Maybe even while standing 1 2. I was too late blocking. There you go. Now, you can also block punish the mid. With your fastest attack, which is your jab, which is 1. Uh, you generally want to know what your fastest attack is, because um, if you want to punish, you may want to use your fastest attack available. But it also depends on the range you have. For example, if you're standing all the way here, well yeah, jab is not going to connect even though it's the fastest attack you have, like this. You may want to use another attack, or you may just want to go get closer to your character, uh, to, to your opponent. I mean, or just wait until he, he gets closer bef before you actually do something. So you need to play a little bit more tactical rather than just mashing buttons, which people really tend to do at lower levels, and it can be really difficult to fight those people because uh, you are more likely to be rewarded by just mashing rather than being defensive because that's really hard you need to read what people are doing but if you do know how to do that or if you teach yourself how to do that you will get much better much more quickly than someone who just mashes because they will hit a plateau and they will not grow beyond that plateau unless they learn that fundamental to block to block punish to launch punish to um, to tech break meaning uh, a throw break which is actually what I'm going to teach you right now so I, I call it a tech, a tech break uh, there are two different kinds of tech breaks there's the, the generic throw you can break with either using one or two if you are getting uh, red for example if I'm doing this you can see purple artifacts at that moment you want to press 1 or 2 but if there is a command a throw being used like this you need to press 1 plus 2 there are also un uh, unbreakable throws like this this one you need to whiff so you need to backdash or you need to punish while the animation is going on so for example if I'm doing this you still can hit me yeah, let's see if I can make Kazia do that. So, if you want to punish it, I would recommend just doing this. Just 1-1. One, one. Because the jab is really quick. I'll turn that on. Okay, good punish. As you can see, he punished me. He was late now. And there you have it. A punish. Uh, no, I want to make him do a throw me. So, there are multiple ways to do a throw. If you want to do a throw more easily, what you can do is buffer a button. So, for example, if I do want to do the 1 plus 3 throw, uh, it, it can be a little bit difficult to do, press the 2 button at the same time. I can do it, but not always. Sometimes it happens like this, or this happens, because I'm just not timing it correctly. What you can do is just press 3 for example and hold it. Now, because you're holding 3, you just have to press 1 and you will guarantee to the front. That really helps by uh, by just practicing that stuff or just after a combo or just baiting people into your throw. Now, if I want to do it, this. And now I can show you how to tech break. 
So this was a generic throw. And you have to press at the moment you see the purple artifact. Now I have to press one or two to the to break the throw. Now I'll press one. And now I press two to break the throw. But you can see if he does if he does a generic throw, one of the hands uh, sticks out more than the other. If you do command throw, you see both of the hands at the same uh, line, so they are sticking out as much as the other. The meaning you can see when you have to press one or two or one plus two to break the throw. So this one is a one or two break you need to do because you can see his left hand is reaching out more than his right hand. Uh, let's set another one. Uh, his, I believe his command throw is 4 4. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. Okay, there we go. So, right now, if I uh, activate him, he will do his command throw, but he will also do a normal throw. That was his command throw, meaning I have to press 1 plus 2. Oh, I messed up because it's uh, random. And it's really difficult as well. One plus two there. That's one plus two. That's a one or or two. One plus two. As you can see, his hands are reaching out more, and I was a little bit later to actually break it. To break. And I was I press strong. I press one plus two instead of the one or two. So you can practice like that to learn how to do uh, the right break. And it can be a little bit difficult, definitely, because it's hard to read and it's really fast. Other than this, you may want to do punishment training. Here you can see a lot of his attacks, which you can punish. So there are ten attacks. Uh, they will show you. You can punish with recommended punishments. If you do the beginning training normal, you will see which punishment you have to use on which attack. So this is the best way to practice. If you want to learn how to punish, you need to time track. Immediately after blocking, you have to do it. There are multiple ways to punish. For example, one, one, two here. Even though I, I have to do one plus two, but here I have to do one plus two because it's far away. Look me. While standing, meaning I'm in crouch 4 4. But I don't have to do it anymore with my hand. That's wrong, but it's also wrong. Now I can do 1 1 2 instead of 1 plus 2. 3 2, I was late. Now I have to do it more quickly. There you go. This is also a way you can uh, learn how to play against specific characters with a specific character you have yourself because for every single character it will be different and um, what's also important is to know how to move you may want to backdash you may want to backdash a lot backdashing you do by pressing tap uh, pressing back twice As you can see I do backdash I go pretty far away you can also run towards your opponent by tapping four twice if you're standing far away but if you're standing relatively close it's just a dash forward if you want to actually run you may want to do forward 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 twice and then that happens an auto tackle if you get close now if you want to be backdashing a lot faster you may want to learn Korean back test. So for the Korean back test, you want to do back, back, down, back, back, and after that, you just want to do back, down, back, back, and just going to continue doing back, down, back, back to do the Korean back test. It's an animation cancel, so it can be a little bit difficult to do it right. And you see pro players doing that a lot, but also sidestepping, which is very important, but also kind of difficult. So stepping you to do by tapping uh, down twice or tapping up the, uh, twice to go to the respective side of your character. Like up is uh, left side step for Kazumi and down is right side step for her. 
If you hold the second tab, you just walk. I've got opposite that as well. If I were to stand on the other side, the, the sides would have swapped. So down is still towards me, but now it's the left side step and up is the right side step in this case. So it really depends on the position of your character as well. Because up now is left and down is right. I hope this tutorial or guide or hints video was uh, kind of useful. I hope you learned something. And uh, hope to see you next one. Peace.